the square. When do you complete the square? When you can't. When you can't diamond method factor it. So if you try to diamond method factor something and you can't, your method to factor it is to complete the square. That's when you use it. So if we look at B, which is so wrong, we've already done it. If you look at B, you can't factor that, or you can't diamond method factor it. So you have to complete the square. Plus, we're doing the complete the square lesson, so probably a wise idea that we do that. If you try to diamond method it, you need numbers that multiply to be 15 and add to be none. And no numbers exist to do that combination. Yeah, back to the tape, you know, before computers existed. So, the first step of completing the square is always to move everything that doesn't have an x to the other side. <coughs> so that's our first step. Take that 5, move it to the other side. We're going to subtract 5 from both sides. Minus 5, minus 5. And now we have 3x squared plus 9x is equal to negative 5. Now we have something on the left-hand side with just x's, and then something on the right-hand side. This is a special case of complete square, where our a value isn't equal to 1. Anytime your a value isn't equal to 1, if you're completing the square, you need to divide out that number. So we need to divide everything on the left-hand side by 3. Because everything on the left-hand side, so divide by 3, Divide by 3. You're basically just factoring a 3 out. You could do 3x. You could. But it is the greatest common factor. But that's not what we want to do for completing the square. We want to leave the x inside. So we just want to take the greatest common factor of the coefficients. And it has to be whatever the a value is. So if that a value was like 0.25, you would have to divide out a 0.25. In this case, it's a 3, so we have to take out a 3. This one works quite nicely. We do not, because we're just factoring the left side. So divide your 3 out, you're left with x squared plus 3x on the inside, and it's all equal to negative 5. <coughs> now, yesterday, I dropped the ball and didn't tell you to divide that 3. We want to divide that 3 for both sides. Because it's not attached to an x anymore. And all things that aren't attached to x's, we want on the other side of the equation. So we're going to divide both sides by 3 so that that 3 up there ends up on the other side. Because we're not trying to do a greatest common factor. Uh, if we if we had this all equal to zero, you'd want to do a greatest common factor, but it's equal to negative five. So taking out that x won't help us. We just want to take the number away from the x squared, which is what we've done. We want to move that three to the other side, so we divide both sides by three. Cancels. Divide by three. Now we have x squared plus 3x is equal to negative 5 <coughs> divided by 3. We've set up our, for our equation so that we can complete the square now. Up until this point, we couldn't complete the square. So in order to complete the square, you need everything that doesn't have an x to the right-hand side, and you need the a to be 1. Yeah. Yeah, that would work if you wanted to just do it like that. I think if you wanted to just factor out and move it right away, so do it to everything. Yeah, that would work out. Um, I'm going to put.
two little boxes. So when we complete the square, we're trying to find that missing C value. Right? That's what completing the square is. You're trying to fill in that C value. What is that C value and what's it always going to be, Dante? B divided by C2 squared. Yeah, that missing C value is always your B value <coughs> divided by 2 squared. Always. So if you're completing the square, the missing value is B divided by 2 squared. Every time. In this case, B is 3. Like, if you look at this, we have an x squared, a is right in front of it, x, the b value is in front of it, and we're missing our c. So we're about to fill in that c value. So b, oh sorry, b, the c value is equal to b divided by 2 squared. Every time. The missing c value is always that. So you can go ahead and fill that in. B is 3 divided by 2 and it's square. Now the reason that works out, and you want to put it to the other side. Right? You can't just add something to one side of the equation and not the other. You have to balance out that scale. You can't add that much over here without adding it back over here. So on this side, you also have 3 over 2 squared. Leave it in that form. Yeah, that's all right. We don't want to do decimal. Because we're also going to be square rooting and stuff like that. What is the decimal? It's 2.5. We'll just leave it. You can always change it to decimal on a test if it's in decimals. Like if you see your answers in decimals, you can change it on the test to match up to the decimals. But if you leave it like this all the way through, you're going to be good no matter what. I'm so glad you did like the divided by three thing. I thought you that. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, what did I do yesterday? Yeah. But you didn't think I did it wrong. You. Okay. This left hand side, you can now diamond method it. So by choosing the b divided by 2 squared, it allows us to do the diamond method. What two numbers added together would give you 3, but then two numbers multiplied together would give you 3 and a half squared? 3 over 2. It works out to be whatever b divided by 2 is. It'll always work out that way. That's why we do it. Because 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 is just 3. 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 is 3 over 2 squared. There's a reason why we use what we use. Because it works out. So we can factor this to be x plus 3 over 2 all squared. It's equal to, and we still have that kind of ugly number, It's a plus. First bracket, it's a plus, yeah. Oh, negative 5 over 3. Negative 5 over 3. Negative 5 over 3. No, not until you square root. Yeah, that's how you square root things. So when we square root it, it'll become a plus or minus. Josh. Yeah. Now what you guys have is an equation that you can solve. We have 1x by itself, but we have to get rid of that square root first. How do you do that? Square root both sides. So if you square root both sides, you'll have x plus 3 over 2 on one side, and it's equal to, and this is where the plus or minus is. <coughs> Anytime you square root now in this class, you plus or minus and then square root. Negative 5 over 3 plus, and I'm going to change that 3 over 2 squared to 9 over 4. Because 3 squared is 9, 
and two squared is four. So that square can come into the brackets. That's how you're going to start seeing it. So I just want to make sure everyone's okay with that. Three over two squared, your exponent <laughs> out, that square right here, it applies in both numbers. So it becomes three squared divided by two squared. Which is really just nine over four. And that's why I did it, because it doesn't cancel out. Right? You're square rooting a binomial underneath that. So you can't just cancel things out. It doesn't apply to each thing individually, it applies to the entire binomial. Close. How do we get x by itself? My answer is have both sides, then you have an answer. So x is equal to negative 3 over 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 <coughs> over 3 plus 9 over 4. Uh, yeah. Uh, from up here, because it was 3 divided by 2 squared, so 3 over 2 squared. The square, it applies down into both numbers. So it becomes 3 squared over 4 2 squared, which is 9 over 4. That's where it came from. Where? Like 3 over 2. over 2, that is It's positive. Three over two? Like on the right there. Like yeah. That's negative. I have the negative right with the three. So it's a little tough to see. I know this a lot. We're gonna do a couple more questions. Todd. That's a great question. You might see the answer like this. You'll likely see those roots added together. So see this the fractions underneath the square root sign? The uh, negative 5 over 3 and the 9 over 4, you're almost guaranteed to see them add those fractions together underneath the root sign. So we'll do it for practice right now to see what it would look like. So see how we have underneath the root sign right now, you have a negative 5 over 3 plus 9 over 4. You can actually add those together. But you have to get a common denominator first. And the common denominator was 12. So you multiply the first one by 4 and the second one by 3 to get both things over 12. So this is like rewind the way back in the day when you had to do this stuff. So we're going to multiply this one by 4 on the top and 4 on the bottom. This one we're going to multiply by 3 on the top and 3 on the bottom. By doing that, it gives you negative 20 over 12 plus 27 over 12. And now we have a common denominator. It equals out to 47 over 12. Oh, sorry. The 7 over 12. Thank you. Good catch. And if you really want, if you're doing a fraction plus a fraction, make it two decimals in your calculator, add the two decimals, math bracket. It'll work. Kind of a lazy way out, but it works. Yes. And then you can simplify that. 7 over 12? Yeah, or like in the square root, you can make it um, yeah, plus not, or minus yeah. one. No, I'm not going to worry about that. You're ready. Yes. Okay. <coughs> how are we feeling? Okay. Hand up. Five good, one bad, anything in between. On how you're doing is completing the square right now. 
Okay. We'll do another one as a class. The Holy Spirit. Okay. We'll do A together. If you guys can walk A through it. So when you have an answer to one of my questions, put your hand up and let me know. What's our first step? Maddie. Or sorry, Aaron. Get C to the other side. So our C value is woo. Our C value is this negative nine halves. We need to put it on the other side. Why do we do that, Eric? Uh, I don't know, actually. Good question, because everything <laughs> that doesn't have an X needs to be on the other side. Yeah. So now it's positive 9 halves on the other side. Yeah, so we got 1 over 2. X squared plus 3X is equal to 9 over 2. Awesome. What is our second step going to be? Josh. I have to take the one half off the x squared. Who knows why I have to do that? Donzi? Yes? Because the a value is not one. It has to be one to be able to complete the square, or else it won't work. So Josh says, get that one half off of there. Who knows how we get it off of there? London. Times it by 2. That works for me. And if we use Aaron's little cheat, you just multiply everything by 2. So everything on the left side, everything on the right side, and then we don't have to worry about the actual factoring of anything. So multiply everything by 2. And what you get is x squared plus 6x is equal to 18 over 2, which is just 9. On the right hand side, 9 over 2 times 2 is 18 over 2. <coughs> or the 2 is just cancelled. Todd? Would it be like, what's the 6x if you multiply the 1 over 2? That's a great question. If it doesn't work out nicely, it's just not, that's the way it's going to be. It's not always going to work out nicely. And that's what I was trying to say. The day that you guys were right here, we had one that did not work out nicely. You had to divide everything by 3, and not everything in the question was divisible by 3. You have to do it. So if this ends up being like 3 over 7, as long as A is, it is 1, you're happy with everything else. Josh? Right now? No, because there's an equal sign in the way. So if you were to bring that 9 over to diamond method it, it would be a negative 9. And you don't have two numbers that multiply to be negative 9 and add to be 6. Calvin wants to know if you can just explain that. I just explained why you can't do it, yeah? The issue is the equal sign. <coughs> okay. What's my next step? Siege. Yep. I need to add a missing C value. So the very first thing you want to do is get just your X's left on the left-hand side, everything else on the right-hand side, and your A value is equal to 1. Once you've accomplished that, you can complete the square. That's add your C value. CJ says it's B divided by 2 squared. That's your missing C value. And that's right. It's always going to be B divided by 2 squared. So I'm going to add that to both sides of the equation. <coughs> x squared plus 6x plus B is 6 divided by 2 squared. And it does add out to be something nice. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like that. Plus 6 over 2 squared. A lot of you realize that B divided by 2 squared is just equal to 3 squared, which is equal to 9. If you do your little P value on the side of your paper somewhere, sometimes it'll work out to a nice number, and you can just put the nice number in right away. Todd? 
reason why we put the uh, other like, the new value of the P to squared on the right side. Yep. It's because we're adding it to the equation, so we have to balance. Exactly, man. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> you're adding it to one side, so you have to balance. That's perfect. That's exactly why you're doing it. You can just change it to a 9 right now. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. If you want it, you can just change it to a 9. Yeah, my suggestion is write this on the side, your p divided by 2 squared, and see if it'll be a nice number. And if it is a nice number, just put the nice number in instead. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to put in my nice number of plus 9. But now... We can diamond method the left hand side. Yep, Chase. Just draw it. Hits Where it hits. did you get 6 over 2? Like, I just know. Where did it come from? <coughs> That's a good question. It's our. It's a, it's a formula, Chase. Okay. So, you're, you're missing C formula. Oh, okay. So now, since, so since you need the. Right. Right. So I know I have a missing C. And the formula is B divided by 2 squared. Alright. Huh. I think you cleared that for a lot of people because the face is like, ah. Uh. Yeah, it's a formula that you won't be given. You'll just have to remember it. B divided by 2 squared. Hey, you can diamond method the left hand side. Ty, question? Yeah. Whenever you do the diamond method, when you're using this method, is, yep. it, is it just your factors and your squares? Yeah. Okay. Because if you diamond method this right now, I'm going to diamond it in red over here. On the top is you need to multiply by 9. You need to add to be 6. It'll always be the same number on both sides. That's why it breaks down to x plus 3 squared. So on the left hand side we have x plus 3 squared and it's equal to 18. I'm going to erase over here. I have x plus 3 squared is equal to 18. What do I have to do with this? Brian Tiffany. Square root both sides. Square root, square root, square root. So we have x plus 3 on the left hand side is equal to the positive or negative square root of 18. Don't forget that positive or negative. Anytime you square root in this class, you positive or negative right in front of it. It's going to be your golden rule for the rest of your life. So the day you die. CJ. I just moved it up here. Oh, I was just separating the two so that you didn't make something like this quick or this quick. What's our next step? Subtract so 3 from both sides. And x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus root 18. I get it now. That's a very important question. It is important. Because a lot of you probably didn't write it in that way. A lot of you probably did plus or minus square root 18 minus 3. A lot of you probably did that. It's not wrong. It's just a different order. You, 90% of the time, will see that answer, though. Rather than the one below. You just have to know the plus or minus. Yes. Ty. Yeah. You can simplify your 18. Ah. London. Uh, they won't both be on test because they're both right. If that ever happens, if you are like these two actually the same on test, call me over <laughs> because that's a very flawed test and not very fair. I remember our English, like, final last year, I was like, yeah, it was like, final. Oh, the extra highlighted? Yeah. We were just talking about that in the staff room. Like, I'm just going to ask, oh, I can't. Like, yes. Yeah. You sometimes, 
I've been in tests before where the, the answer is in darker font, but just slightly, and it's every one. Or there will be a little star beside the answer, and like the teacher just didn't notice. So you get your test, and you're like, oh, 100%. <laughs> 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 but that in two seconds. I suppose to tell the story where a kid got that, and all the right answers were half the whole stuff, and he got to the third yellow test. Ha! And he still didn't get it. That's pretty funny. I think I gave you a test last year with the answers on the back. Julie. Didn't I? Uh, I think so, yeah. I, I gave her a, a reassessment and the answers were stapled to the back. Yeah, I, oh, I gave her the wrong copy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all made mistakes, right? Okay. That's your answer. Tyrese has a good idea. And he said you could simplify that root 18. And you could, because 9 and 2 equals 18, so it can be plus or minus 3 root 2. Okay. You, you probably won't see that. So like we'll most likely yeah. see root in. Yes. Yeah, the one that's boxed right now, you'll most likely see. It is possible that you see it like that. Uh, it's unlikely until the final exam that you would see it. For now, we really just want to test that you can do the factory. Okay. Let's do B. Is it okay if I erase this? Okay, end up, what's our first step? Tyrese. Move the two to the other side. CJ, just stop talking while you're doing this. You can keep doing it, just stop talking. Subtract so two from both sides. That's your first step. And I'm going to start on the left again. So negative 5x squared minus 10x is equal to negative 2. What's the next thing that you need to do? Get rid of the negative 5. You get rid of the negative 5. Hand up if you know how you can get rid of the negative 5 on the A value. Julie. Oh, wow. I should divide everything by negative 5. Yeah, divide everything by negative 5, and it'll get rid of the negative 5 in the A value. So divide by negative 5. Divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5. And you get x squared plus 2x is equal to 2 over 5. And it's positive now. Because a negative divided by a negative cancels out. <coughs> Your checklist before you complete the square is always... Is the are the x by themselves on the left hand side? Yes. Is the a value one? Yes. That's our two things we need to be able to do. And we've done them. So now you can complete the square. What's the formula for your missing c value, Jason? What's the what's the? It's okay. You were doing work. What's the formula for your missing c value? You don't remember? Ah, tell me you remember. Tyrese. I don't want to say it and be wrong, because that can be basically just laugh at it, so I'm not. That's fair. You better not laugh at cheese. Say it to me, man. Don't say it to me. Don't say it to me, man. Yeah. B divided by 2 squared. B divided by 2 squared. That's your missing C value formula. B divided by 2 squared. I'm going to do it on the side. B divided by 2 squared is equal to 1. One is your missing value. So add one to both sides of the equation. X squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 2 over 5 plus 1. Yeah, we're going to get there. On the right hand side, 2 over 5 <coughs> plus 1. If you punch it in your calculator, then math bracket, you'll get 7 over 5. 1 is the same thing as 5 over 5. Exact same thing. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 7 over 5. 
it's positive. Uh, You're the only one that always likes my bosses to be a Okay. Once you've completed the square, what can you do? Why did we complete the square? <coughs> so now we can diamond method it. Yeah, Bailey. You can diamond method the left hand side. When you diamond method it, what do you get? One. X plus one squared. So you'll have X plus one all squared is equal to seven over five. Two numbers that multiply to be one and add to be two. One and one. Steve, which question? You're the, oh, okay, what step? Okay, two over five plus one is the same thing as two over five plus five over five, because we need common denominators to be able to add. The top side, the bottom stays the same. Uh -huh. But where'd you get the one? Where'd that one? The one came from my missing C value formula. Yeah, you need your missing C value. What's the next step to get X by itself? Square root both sides. Square root, square root. Mr. Elwood, could you come to the office for telephone call, please? Mr. Elwood, to the office for telephone call, please. X plus one is equal to positive or negative square root seven over five. What's my last step? Move that one away from the X. X is equal to negative one plus or minus the root of seven over five. That's your answer. Ty. Sorry, I can't hear you. Guys, I've got a question. I'm just trying to listen. Go ahead. Bring it in. We can't. We can't bring it in because of this plus and minus here. Like that. That creates two equations. So remember, there's situation one, which is negative one plus root seven over five, and then there's situation two, which is positive or negative one. Minus root seven over five. So because there's two situations, we can't combine these things at all. You guys seem like you're doing pretty good. Okay, hands up. Five means you think you're getting it. One means I'm still lost. I'm gonna go to English. Okay. Ready to make it harder? No. <laughs> Word problems. It's still easy, and actually word problems with this is even easier because you just take the equation and basically just work with the equation. Like the words are all pretty much gibberish at this point. It's just trying to put an equation in the context. If you just take the equation and solve it, you'll probably be good. So the only thing they're going to give you is one other piece. All these words, there's going to be one piece of information that matters. A person stands on a cliff that is 55 meters high and tosses a stone. So he's up here. He's on a cliff. He should be. He's on a cliff. He chucked. I was for a while. There's water down here. He chucks a stone. It's a little black too, because he picked up off the black hood. <coughs> he goes, Apparently it broke space time if you want to press it Yeah, I got some good art. The approximate height of the stone H meters above the water after T seconds is this ugly equation. So the height of the stone after some amount of time. 
When will the stone hit the water? Give the answer to the nearest tenth of a second. The trick here is that this looks like the information that's useful, when it's actually not the information that's useful. What is the information that's useful? True. The big part is, when will we see the stone hit the water? They just gave you the height without you even seeing it. What's the height if the stone hits the water? The height is equal to zero. <coughs> they gave you a piece of information and kind of hid it in there. They gave you some decoy information up here with the 55 meters. Anytime you're doing these questions, if something's hitting the ground, there's a good chance that you're using zero if you somehow hit that You would have to make it zero to see how long it took. Okay, quadratic in general form? Yeah, they don't have to give you quadratics in general form, though. They could have given you, a, they could have said, how long does it take for the height to reach 10 meters? And then your height would have been 10. The trick with, and then you bring it up, you're good. But that's the thing, is they could give you an H that's not zero. Okay, we have some questions. Don, do we have to rearrange that? Because, like, the T squares at the very end. That's another good question. If you look at their formula, they put T squared last. Where do we put t squared first? First. So when we go to do this question, we will want to reorder it. London, you still have a question? Oh, I thought I saw your hand up. My bad. Okay, let's answer this question. Height is equal to zero, so I can change the h to be zero. It's equal to negative 5 t squared plus 30t minus 55. Plus 55, thank yeah. you, sorry. All I did was I wrote my formula in the way that it should be, and I subbed in h as zero. That's all I did. <coughs> I'm gonna run out of room over here. This question is so low on the board. No, that drawing is going nowhere. <laughs> How dare you even suggest that? Okay. What's the first thing you want to do? I would say try diamond methoding it. it. It might work. You never know. This one doesn't work. <laughs> if you try diamond method right off the bat, that's a great idea. This one doesn't work. There's no numbers that are going to multiply to be... 275 and add to B30. It's not going to happen. That's a great question. If you divide by 5 first, here's the problem you run into. Your, your 11 is going to be stuck in some brackets. So if you take 5 out, You'd have negative t squared plus 7, 6t plus 11. And now that 11 is stuck in the brackets and you can't move it. So you have to, the very first thing you do before you multiply anything is just move things away from the t's. That's a great question. Aaron. How, like, if you have this question about a test, like, yeah. how did you build the like, factor and not, like, the Like, you're at this point, right? So we're sitting here right now. You figured out to put h in a zero, and now you're looking for a t value, right? Yeah, try to factor. Like I said, try to diamond factor. You wouldn't. You'd fail. It wouldn't work. I got some time. Yeah. If you have. Guys, if you have a t squared or an x squared or an anything squared, the only way you're going to be able to find the zeros or the answer is to factor. 
be it diamond method, greatest common factor, <coughs> any method, maybe it's difference of squares, it could be any method, but the only way you're ever going to get a t squared by itself is to use some method of factoring in this class. It's just knowing the class where it is going to happen. So some of you as the first step is move the 55 to the other side. That's perfect. So minus 55 on the left is equal to negative 5t squared plus 30t. What's our second step going to be? Divide both everything by negative 5 because we need our a value to be 1. And remember, it's negative 5t squared right now. So everything's divided by negative 5. And you get 11 equals t squared minus 6t. Now what's your next? <coughs> missing c value. Who knows the missing c value formula? Oh, I should actually stay in the room. What is it, Megan? <coughs> b divided by 2 squared. That's your missing c value. Your missing c value is b divided by 2 squared. b is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 squared. It works out to be 9. It's positive 9. Because when you square it, negative times a negative makes a positive. So we have, add that 9 to both sides. Right? Add your missing C by both sides. You've got to balance the sides. So we have 20 is equal to we divided by the, yeah the 55 divided by the yeah minus 16 <coughs> plus 9 now you can factor completing the square allowed you to factor that's why we did what we did so factor the right hand side Numbers that multiply to be 9 and add to be negative 6. Negative 3 and negative 3. So we have 20 is equal to x minus 3 squared. Square root both sides. Let's do it. Square root. Square root. You have square root 20 is equal to x minus 3. What did I forget to do? <coughs> Not yet. Plus or minus 20. Plus or minus square root 20. Don't forget that. Yeah, sorry. At some point I switched. My brain always does things in X. I'll switch back to a T in a second. It doesn't matter. Uh, no. I'll take it to T though, because you should stay consistent. Okay. Add a T3 to both sides. So you have 3 plus or minus root 20 equals T. Just wait, that's not going to be your answer, and there's a reason why. Wait. Hi, Reese. hardest part about word problems is that word problems are in context. You need to try both answers. You have two answers right now. You have 3 plus root 20, and you have 3 minus root 20. If you do 3 minus root 20, check what you get. 3 minus root 20. So what do you get? Anton? Or sorry. Yeah, I meant to count, but yeah. It's a negative uh, test. Yeah, if you do 3 <coughs> minus root 20, you get negative 1.4. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 
Is it possible that it took negative time for the rock to hit the ground? No. So your answer is only 3 plus root 20. Because the negative answer doesn't make sense. That's going to happen when you do word problems. There will be one answer that makes sense, one answer that doesn't. And if it's a word, if it's a word problem that's multiple choice, you'll probably see option one is both of them, <coughs> option two is the positive, option three is the negative. So you need to kind of use context to be like, why would it only be one of them, or why could it be both of them, or why is it not either of them? That is possible. So. There may be a question where the context it actually does happen twice. For instance, um, uh, money makes sense. The one I've seen is uh, planes and submarines when they reach the surface because they start at the surface. So that would be the first time. And if they go up and they come back down, that would be the second time they touch the surface. So both your answers would make sense. Like, at what point does it, is the plane touching the ground? T equals zero and T equals now. Or a submarine going underwater. A submarine is going and then it descends and then it comes back up at some formula. At what times was the boat at the surface of the water? That T equals zero and then it went under and it came back up and then T is an hour or something like that. They have weird ways of asking multiple questions. One other time where it might happen. See, we have a plane again. They like plane questions. That's flying, goes up, goes down. At what time was the plane at a height of 100? Well, it was at a height of 100 on the way up, and it was at a height of 100 on the way back down at some point. So there would be two answers that would make sense. They'd be like, oh, yeah, after 20 minutes, we were at that height. Then at an hour and 20 minutes, we were back at that height again as we were coming back down. You know what really makes me happy? Well, I don't know why it makes me happy, but for this angle, it kind of looks like the guy's throwing a rock at a drowning man. It does. Yeah, it does. It looks like he's like, he's like stuck in there.